So some of us actually never ingest the minerals that are necessary for us to live. And we wonder why we're dying. Wonder why cancer now affects almost 50% of men and almost 40% of women. Do you know that 50% of men will be diagnosed with cancer in this lifetime and about 40% of women? Now that's including skin cancer, but it's still very frightening statistics. That's why most of us get heart disease. Most of us, not just some of us, but most of us get heart disease. Doesn't mean that we're not living longer because we're, we have tubes in us and we're given all kinds of pills, but that's, is, is that really living, living longer? So these supplements are actually have become necessary just to have the minimal amount of nutrition in our, in our bodies. That's what's been missing. And supplements have to be chosen wisely. Now, there are also genetic factors that we find. And when I do evaluations on people, I find that some patients have actually genetic blockages to utilizing certain vitamins and minerals, for example. And we can actually use, hello. We can actually use supplements to bypass these genetic blockages. And that's, that becomes very, very important. So in order to treat each person as an individual, and ideally, sometimes supplements are more than necessary, more than just a luxury, they're an absolute necessity. What about toxins? Did our ancestors detoxify? Did, did, did our ancestors do colon hydrotherapy or far infrared sauna? Well, to a certain degree, our ancestors did do a lot of detoxification. First of all, our ancestors weren't exposed to the level of toxins that we have in our environment. It's a totally different environment that we live in now that used to be. You know, thousands of new chemicals are put into our environment every year. Thousands of new chemicals. Not only haven't the individual chemicals been tested for safety in a lot of cases, but nobody even has a clue as to how dangerous they are in combination with all the other thousands of chemicals that have been put out in the environment every year in the past. Newborn babies are born with 72 different kinds of uh, toxic chemicals in, their, uh, in the umbilical cord. 72 types. That's in the most, even in the most pristine areas. In the North Pole and the South Pole, they've been able to do core drilling and have found toxins in the, in the snow. It's raining down on us. It's all over the place. I'm not saying this as a means of frightening people. I want people to be aware that this is a different world than it used to be, a completely different world. And when we talk about detoxification, it's actually become a necessity. It's not a luxury. It's really part of life. Now, our ancestors did detoxify even the small amount of toxins that they were uh, exposed to. What did they do? They were active. They lived out in the sun. They got sunshine, they sweated, they perspired, more scientific, and they detoxified in that way. That was one of their ways of detoxification. They also ate lots of fiber. Their diet was loaded with fiber. You know, the fruits that they ate were not as sweet, but had even more fiber. They were very fibrous fruits, they were fibrous vegetables, and they ate lots of that. That was a big part of their, their food supply. So the fiber actually helped to clean themselves out. So this informs us. What can we do from a standpoint of the modern man? We probably have to do more than our ancestors did. We have to probably be conscious of the toxins in our environment, learn to avoid them, and then do things like, at times, eating more fiber, making sure that's an important part of your diet, doing far infrared saunas, getting exercise, getting out in the sun. We're so afraid of the sun. I mean, have, has anybody... Anybody been told, you know, that the sun is bad for you? Everybody been told that pretty much? Everybody has that same impression that the sun is actually uh, sort of poisonous for us. Well, let me tell you, if the sun is really bad for us, why did our ancestors born without body hair, and why, why were we our, the first man in Africa? What, what's going on with that? I mean, if sun is such a horrible thing for us, this doesn't make any sense. Now, sure, the ozone layer has been depleted. Maybe the sun is more dangerous than it used to be. But really, avoid it all entirely, like the plague? Well, what's become a plague is vitamin D deficiency. Every patient in my practice gets tested for vitamin D 25 hydroxy levels. That level is low, is deficient in 70% of my practice in New York. Now, if I practice in Hawaii, 
I found out recently there was a study done in patients in Hawaii. They're living inside of houses anyway. So they don't get much sun. They're also pretty high deficiency. Children, adolescents, 55, 60% of them are vitamin D deficient. So you say, okay, so what's so important about vitamin D? Vitamin D is important to protect us against cancer, against heart disease, hypertension. It helps us uh, fight autoimmune disease. It's one of the most important substances known to man, and it's produced in our skin by exposure to sunlight. That's the best and safest way to get it. Now, in the Northeast, we can't get it uh, in the winter. And if you have very dark skin, you're gonna need supplementation if you live up here, unless you're sitting out in a bathing suit and living down in the tropics. But absolutely, 100%, people need vitamin D supplementation up in New York. And nobody is gonna be optimally healthy without that. So that's, again, a little bit of wisdom from our ancestors. And people have become paranoid about the sun. It's crazy. Now, I never advocate people staying out in the sun for a long, long time. Now, how many people know what the minimum daily requirements for vitamin D is? Everybody hear that? 400 units, people say, 400 IUs is usually the, the official minimum daily requirement. Now, doctors are sometimes talking about 1,000. If you stay out in the sun with most of your body exposed for 15 minutes in, in the summer in New York, Guess how many units? 15,000, 20,000. 15 minutes is all. So I'm not advocating staying outside in order to get burnt. But if you stay outside in midday sun for 10 minutes, you get enough vitamin D to last you for practically for the week. And for people who are deficient, actually, they need to do more than that. They need to be out fairly regularly. But it's, there's nothing wrong with getting a little sunlight. Again, not to the point of burning. Our ancestors were probably a lot smarter than we are. Nobody, none of our ancestors sat outside with a sun reflector at the beach for 12 hours, you know, slathering on this sunblock that they think was actually protecting them. It was just made of all of parabens, which are carcinogenic. You know, really, a sun, you know, we have to be smart about being in the sun, but sunlight can actually be helpful for us. So we talked about diet. We talked about supplements. We talked about exercise, we talked about stress management, we talked about toxins. And there are other ways of getting rid of toxins, by the way, I didn't co completely finish. Uh, I think Dr. Calipay earlier talked about chelation. You know, chelation is a very good way of getting rid of heavy metals. Obviously, our ancestors didn't chelate themselves. Uh, but, you know, this has been associated with quackery in the past. But interestingly enough, the National Institute of Health put together a $30 million trial Study, to study chelation. And we're, our, our practice is the only practice on Long Island that's been uh, chosen as a principal investigator in this trial. And so if the National Institute of Health is interested in studying it, it's not quite quackery. It's, it's about time. I mean, they're about probably 30 years too late, but it's at least they're willing to study it now. So detoxification. And then bioidentical hormones. And what's that about? I mean, our ancestors, did they take bioidentical hormones? doesn't sound natural. Well, truthfully, our ancestors probably lived a pretty short, mean life. I mean, it, it was tough being a hunter-gatherer, believe me. If, if you broke a toe, you probably would starve to death. And a lot of them probably broke bones and uh, you know, got injured. If they got an infection, they probably would die because there was no antibiotics. Although now everybody, all the infections are resistant to antibiotics anyway, so we're really gonna be in trouble if, if we don't fix our immune systems, which is another issue. Um, but what about the bioidentical hormones? Well, the truth is that m people didn't live long enough. You know, our, our genetics were only important to keep ourselves fertile as long as, you know, for a certain period of time. Once we had kids, that was it. You know, that was all that was important for survival of the fittest. So our genetics really don't care if we live to be 70 or 80 or 90 years old. And it, they couldn't care less whether we're living vibrantly at 70, 80 or 90 years old. But people are different these days. People are actually have expectations of not just living a long life, but being vibrantly healthy. So we tweak the rules a little bit with bioidentical hormones. We say, okay, you know, we do a lot of things that are unnatural. Naturally, you know, if people had pneumonia, if got pneumonia and they're, you know, I mean, if, if it's, you want to be completely natural, you have to let them die because antibiotics are not natural either. So we'd make all kinds of interventions and people make all kinds of choices. And this seems to be one of our culture's choices, that it's not enough just to live long, but to live well.